I greet you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to you all on this, this the third Sunday before Lent to our wonderful All Saints. And welcome also to those who are following from home, wherever that is. Everyone is welcome and let us truly worship God. The Lord be with you. As we meet together, let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we remember that we're all imperfect. In different ways, we let God down. So let us give thanks that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. We confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we confess together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we've sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
And now we can say together, Gloria in excelsis. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You're seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And now, I'll collect for this, the third Sunday before Lent. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son went among the crowds and brought healing with his touch, help us to show his love in your church as we gather together and by our lives as they are transformed into the image of Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Maggie will read our first lesson. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, starting at verse 12. If Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have died in Christ have perished. For this life only, we have hoped in Christ. We are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. This is the word of the Lord. And now the choir will lead the singing of our first hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the Height. Thank you. 
Alleluia, alleluia. This child is the light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Alleluia. Please stand. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a, a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem and the coast of Tyre and Sidon they'd come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured and all in the crowd were trying to touch him for power came out from him and healed all of them then he looked up at his disciples and said blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of God blessed are you who are hungry now for you will be filled blessed are you who weep now for you will laugh blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you revile you and defame you on account of the son of man Rejoice on that day and leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich. For you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now. For you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now. For you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what your ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. For our text this morning, we'll take three words which are much repeated in our Holy Gospel this morning. Blessed are you, and then dot, 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 because there's all sorts of things that Jesus said result in us being blessed. Blessed are you. Now, where shall we start today? How about Monty Python today? Uh, Life of Brian. Let's see where that takes us. If you've seen Life of Brian, maybe you remember when Jesus did the Sermon on the Mount. Not the Sermon on the Plain as Luke describes it, but the other description of it where Jesus was on the mountainside, the huge crowd all around him, and of course those at the edge couldn't hear, and what do you do when you can't hear? And it seems though it's interesting, nudge the one in front, what's he saying? And the one in front nudging the old Chinese whispers came. What's he saying? Until eventually they got to somebody who heard. And then it started to come back. And what did they say? Blessed are the cheesemakers. <laughs> Stop. Because this is a reminder of us of two things. One, how often we get wrong what other people are saying to us, we misinterpret, but even more to the point, taking advantage of the, uh, the funny film, it's easy also to misunderstand what Jesus is saying to us. So there's a double lesson in that silly joke. We need to take great care when we're listening to others to make sure that we really do understand them. 
And let us pray, God, that when we're trying to interpret the wisdom of Jesus, let us pray that we do really and truly understand. And it's important because Jesus is going on and on about some people are blessed and some people are basically cursed. Water you, how unhappy you are, how unlucky you are, how stupid you are. So it makes a big difference between getting it right and getting it wrong because we need to understand what is necessary to be blessed, what is it that God favours, what is it that God asks of us and what is it that God doesn't like us to be and like us to do. Now, let's place that in the context of our Gospel reading today because actually it's easy to misunderstand this particular Gospel reading because it moves from one scene to another. And if, if we were watching it in a film with a director who truly understood, I think he would have made use of what our two masters at the, um, at the computer screen do sometimes, for those of you who watch at home. Sometimes they zoom in. And I think a sympathetic and understanding filmmaker would have started the first part of the Holy Gospel with the crowd, the cheesemakers and the lot. Because at the beginning, Jesus is talking to everybody. He's just been up the mountain, according to Luke, and there he selected his disciples. He selected 12. And then he came down. And then we zoom in. No, actually, we, we wouldn't zoom in for a while because he comes down and he does the healing. He, every, they said his power was so great that anybody who touched him was healed. And so it would be widescreen. But then it zooms in because when Jesus starts to talk about being blessed and cursed, he's talking to the disciples. Why? Well, maybe Monty Python tells us something there. Because the big crowd, would they be capable to understand? If they couldn't even understand the difference between cheesemakers and, and, and peacemakers? Probably not. So the camera would zoom in because this teaching about the Beatitudes is for the disciples. It was like a team talk, like a pep talk. And I can't help thinking about pep talks without remembering my junior school when we were going to play our first, I think probably our only football match. We were, remember, we were only 60 from 5 to 11, 50% boys and 50% girls. So to, to get 11 men and true on the football pitch was a bit of a challenge. Anyway, we, we had a match. We had our pep talk. We were going to pass it here. We were going to pass it there. We were going to call for each other. My uncles told me they couldn't stand up for laughing because we played on the, the field in front of the farm. Because said, As soon as the whistle blew, 11 little dots all ran for the ball. <laughs> Everybody ran. The team talk was totally... Uh, Totally, totally forgotten. Let's hope the disciples' team talk was much more understood. Because it was of vital importance for them immediately. Not for the future, but for the immediate presence. And to emphasize that, yet again I want to dig into the original Greek of the word which uh, is at the core of our uh, text this morning, blessed. Blessed are you. The original Greek translation is actually not blessed. It's much more like congratulations. It refers to a, a word of approval for something which is being done or has just been done. It's not talking about the future. It's not you congratulations if you get to university. Congratulations if you attend every Lent course in the future. It's congratulations. You're here today. You've understood that blessed are the peacemakers. Congratulations. Congratulations now in the immediate present. Actually, you know my um, hatred of this fashion of bless this, bless that, bless the other. Isn't it good that it's actually congratulations now? Oh, bless. Oh, bless. Isn't that little dog sweet? Oh, bless. Yeah. 
means absolutely nothing. Jesus meant a lot. He didn't mean no bless. He meant congratulations if you're doing what is good in the sight of God. Luke, the physician, he understood how important this was. That is why he expands on the Beatitudes much more than Matthew in the, in the other account. He gives a much deeper view and in, in some ways it's clearer. He leaves nothing to chance. You know, he makes it absolutely clear what you'll be congratulated for and conversely what you'll be cursed for, what God likes and what God doesn't like. The other difference between Matthew and Luke is that he, he matches all of the congratulations and all of the, uh, the weaknesses. So, congratulations. If you're poor, the kingdom of God belongs to you. But woe to you if you're rich because you're enjoying your reward now. And so it goes on. Congratulations. If you're hungry, you'll be filled. Woe to you if you're full now. You'll eventually be hungry. So, it is there, left and right, nothing left to be misunderstood. That's where we started. How important it is that we make clear what we believe and how important it is that we listen carefully to the words of others. And it has enormous implications. If we, if we really do dig into the Beatitudes, yeah, what do we dream about? Yeah, winning the lottery maybe, that big house in the country, or that place by the sea, or this, that, and the other. What did Jesus say? What are you if you're full now? You're going to be hungry in the future. What are you if you're rich? There's nothing left for you after that. God reverses all of our expectations. And we need to understand that. Yet God understands the pain that we feel. If we're poor, He understands our poverty. He understands our despair at times. He understands the things that we're frightened of. Our Lord, on the night before He was arrested, Father, take this cup away from me. Yet, let it be so, thy will be done. Jesus knew fear. Jesus knew despair. I've never read anywhere about Jesus driving a Cadillac. It would be a bit difficult, but I've never really heard about him. Only once did he ride on a donkey. The rest of the time, his feet were good enough. Congratulations if we understand the things that are important in life and throw away the stupidities of the things that give short-term joy but can lead to long-term misery. So, the promise of Christ in the Sermon on the Plain is that blessed are we if we can be happy at times when we might expect to be sad, if we can laugh through our tears, if we can keep going when we're hungry, if we can smile, turn the other cheek when we're abused, ridiculed, look at those stupids, going to that damp, dirty, cold, all saints, that's one way to look at it, thank you God that we have all saints, with its heaters, could be worse, my glass is half full. We can see everything in different ways. God asks us to see them in a positive way. To understand that it's when we have the least that we have the most. If we understand that we have to live in a way that's strange to the world. A way that actually goes the opposite way to a lot of others. I remember my dad telling me when they used to go to the annual feast in the local market town, they were always given a few pennies in the pockets to go to the, uh, the fair in the evening. 
And they used, those pennies used to burn a hole in the pocket. And they were waiting and waiting and waiting. And there was a cricket match, like it was the men versus the ladies of the village. And they were trying to pretend that they were interested in the, um, uh, in the cricket to keep their money. And little Thomas Tucker, it was his name, I promise you, it was his name. He said, oh, lads, I'm going to do my shopping while the cricket match is on. And off he went and he spent his pennies. He went the opposite way to the crowd. That's just a silly but true story. But sometimes, often, we have to go the opposite way to the crowd to be blessed. Luke writes that we are blessed if we are congratulated by God. But what are we to be congratulated for? That's the final thing for us to, to ponder on today. It's not about being a cheesemaker. It's about understanding that each and every one of us have different gifts. One of us stands up here and spouts to you for ten minutes. The ones with the voices sit and sing beautifully for us. Glennis plays with the hands of an angel. The lads do the video recording for us. Some of us sit and listen. We all have different gifts. We all have different talents. It's up to us how we use them. And we can use them, but don't get me wrong, we can abuse them as well. And that is why there's the warning about having a little and having a lot. If we have a lot, it's very easy to waste our talents. And so, if we only have little, then we, every one of us, can do our best with what we have. And if we do, God says, congratulations, you are blessed. And to repeat once more, conversely, if we don't use those gifts, then God says, woe to you, now and forever. Now, maybe that uh, seems hard, and it is at times. Maybe even often it's hard. But let's take comfort from Psalm 121, verse 8. The psalmist writes, The Lord shall keep watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So, whether times are good or whether times are hard, we're not on our own. We're not on our own. We're not alone. Let us remember that the Lord is watching over us, our going out and our coming in. So, to put it all in a nutshell to finish, the simple truth is, we are all blessed by God. Blessed are you. Blessed are we. Blessed are every one of us. We're all blessed. The question is, do those blessings result in us being congratulated by God? Let us pray that the answer to that question is yes. Amen. And now I invite you to join with me. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He's seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And now let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. 
Dear loving Heavenly Father, as we meet here today to worship you, we give you thanks for all of your blessings so freely given to us. We pray that we may listen and understand how best we can use those blessings and use them for you. We pray that the way that we use them may be as you wish and that we may be worthy of your congratulations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we give you thanks that we have this place where we can come and worship you. We pray that we may be good custodians, that we may make this a place of welcome, and that when we leave this your house, your light may go with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for the world which is yours and of which we are your custodians. Today we pray particularly for the people of Ukraine and for the leaders of all the nations which are suddenly taking such an interest in a country which has not known peace for many years. Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine and we pray for those who can either make it a better place or a much worse place. May they seek a way of peace and may any decisions be pleasing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for ourselves and for our families and for our friends. We thank you for our blessings. And we remember now in our prayers, especially those who at this time are finding things particularly tough. We pray for those still directly affected and suffering from COVID. And for doctors and nurses and carers still working way above the call of their duties to care for those who need especially 24 hours surveillance. We take a moment of silence and we remember in our hearts those who we know and love who especially need your comfort and peace in their souls at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, in these prayers, we reflect on how you are with us from the beginning to the end. We give you thanks that yesterday, Sienna Matthews came and was baptized. We give you thanks that we have one more member of the All Saints family. And as we pass through the life cycle, we remember also those who we have known and loved who are no longer with us. We thank you that we were so blessed that we knew them. May we show that we've learned from them in the way that we use our gifts. And so now we join together all our prayers our spoken prayers, the prayers of our hearts, as we pray together. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He's reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I wave to you a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. And for those of you at home, peace be with you wherever you are. 
And now we prepare the table for the Eucharist. God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make branches of the divine. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you've created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you've freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you've sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night as he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took a cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, 
We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. In a moment I will mask and bring the Eucharist in one kind to you at, at your seats. For those of you at home, I commend, as ever, the prayer of the act of spiritual communion. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, who gave Jesus Christ to be for us the bread of life, that those who come to him should never hunger, draw us to the Lord in faith and love, that we may eat and drink with him at his table in the kingdom, where he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we pray together. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. And now the choir will sing, uh, lead us in the singing of that beautiful hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those who you love, today and always. Amen. Thank you for being here today. And I'll come forward because I want to thank Glenis for, as ever, substituting beautifully in the absence of Diane. Thank you, Glenis, and thank you, choir, for leading our, our singing so beautifully. But thank you, everybody. Congratulations. You've been here. You've been worshipping God here in All Saints. And those of you at home, congratulations also. You've taken time to think to worship God. May we all this week be thoughtful, listening, understanding, and responding. And if you want to do that in church, there's a service on Wednesday, the said Eucharist on Wednesday at 10.30, and then second Sunday before Lent, next Sunday, we'll be worshipping God again at 10 o'clock, God willing. Um, Charmian's back with us, a little, a little battered, but... Much improved on last week. Shamian, please do go down a gear. You do so much for us. We need you here with us. It's great that Shamian's back. And our thoughts and prayers with Joe Lever, who would have been reading the, uh, leading the intercessions today, 
but she's sick at home. So our thoughts and prayers with the Lever family at this time also, and with anybody for whom things are tough at this present time. So wherever you're going to be, whatever you're going to be doing, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.